Happy Friday, fifth grade. So you guys should be on lesson 5.4. You should have a blank piece of paper out. You should have a pencil and eraser. And if you have and if you have graph paper, this can also help you with learning how to graph your points. So you can also take that out as well. Now, for your exit ticket, I mean your PST today, you are going to begin with just the first page of doing A and B. Okay, so the directions are saying Miss Base is tracking her space tomato plant project at school. Use the chart below to answer the questions. She measured the amount of days it was taken to grow the plants and how tall they grew. Then they have this chart right here. Now, for part A, you need to label the X and Y axis for the above graph. And then part B, explain the meaning of 2, 2. All right. So go ahead and, of course, start your exit tickets. And I want to push you guys to always order, I mean, label your ordered pairs first. So you guys should be labeling what, what these pairs are before you even get into part A and B, because this will help you visualize what is going on. Pause the video and get started. All right. So for part A, well, of course, before part A, you were supposed to label all of your points first. You should be getting into the habit of this so you are knowing what is on your X axis and what is on your Y axis and what is that paired, that ordered pair. Now, for part B, I mean part A, it says label the X and Y axis for the above graph. So, this is when I need to take my information from my chart and try to label it with my um, X and Y coordinate plane right here. So I know after I labeled all of my um, ordered pairs that my X axis represents days. How do I know that my X axis represents days? Right, because if you were to look at the um, labeled pairs, you would see that it's day one, day two, day three, and day four in your ordered pairs. So that's why we always get into this habit of labeling. Now, I know my y-axis is my height of my plant because the second part, which is my on my y, it gives me the information I need to look at the height of the plant. So it says height of plant here in my chart in centimeters, and then it goes from zero, two, four, seven. So if I look back at my ordered pairs, my Y is going from zero, two, four, and seven. Okay, so this is where we're getting, this is what we're getting into today, where we are trying to realize how we can label what our y axis is representing and what our x axis is representing based off okay. of the stories that are in this um pst so i'm looking at the chart that's given in the story that we're working with which is miss base is tracking her space tomato plant project and trying to put our words to use here for how we can label the x and y axis okay now part b it is telling me to explain the meaning of two two ordered pair x is 2 and y is 2. What do you guys think this means? Right. So this the first the x, so what does the x mean in this ordered pair 2 2? Right. The x represents the day. Now, in relation to our story here, what does the y represent? The y represents the height of the plant. So all to, if we're putting the words all together, we are realizing that on day two, the plant grew two centimeters. Okay, so remember, we are tracking her space tomato plant project at school. She measured the amount of days it was taking to grow the plants and how, the, how tall they grew. So on day two, the plant grew two centimeters. Okay, now you guys are going to go through the same process for C and D. So this is another different type of story. And you're getting new content in your chart. So go ahead and try out C and D. And don't forget to 
label your um, points on your graph. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, so before we start discussing C and D, I want you guys to realize like what we just did. You guys are working on a coordinate plan and you're labeling that X and Y axis so it makes sense with the story problem. So we just went through the story problem for Miss Bass and then you had to move on to do the story problem for Miss Johnson. Okay, realize that we are looking at the story that's given, the chart that's given, in order to help us articulate what is actually going on and how we can get use information that's given from a story and chart to determine where the pairs, where the pairs are, or where they should lie on that coordinate plane. Okay, so now for Miss Johnson, we're going to go through the same steps that we just went through. All right. First, you guys need to label the points. Do you guys notice anything similar from these points to the previous points? Right, they're the same. But what is different from this story to the previous story? Correct, we, go, we will be having different labels for our X and Y axis. Why? Because this is a different story. So for this one, it says Miss Johnson is running a marathon. Each week, she is attempting to run even more miles to build up her stamina. Now, we labeled our points. Now we're going to look at how we labeled the X and Y axis from above. Now, why did I label the X axis with weeks? Right, so she is running each week. So we are trying to figure out the weeks we already know. And then the y-axis is labeled miles because? Correct, because we need to figure out how many miles she's running in those weeks on each week. Okay, now that we have that already done. Okay, now we are going to go into part D, explain the meaning of 2-2. Two, two. Now. We just did explain the meaning of 2-2 two, two for the first page in that story. And then now we're going to explain the meaning for the same point. But clearly it's going to have a different meaning from the first one. So I want you to think, why would this have a different meaning than part B in the first story? Right. This is going to be a different meaning because the coordinate, even though the coordinate plane and points are exactly the same, we need to realize that the information from the story is going to be different. So we are not looking at the height of the plant in days anymore. We're looking at how many miles she runs each week. So part, um, so this, the meaning of 2-2 two, two would be what? Correct. It is she ran two miles in week two. All right. So realize that you can use information from a story and a chart to understand what points or the ordered pair on a graph represent. OK, so although some graphs may appear to be identical, the story problem provides context for that graph. So just as these two graphs and coordinate planes were the same, we had two different stories because of the information that was given for us. Okay, now you guys are going to pause the video and write down your notes. Okay, so welcome back from writing down your notes. So in your notes, you should realize that you are basically summing up everything that we were working on for this um for the PST for today. So I can use information from a chart or from a story to determine the connection between the ordered pair on a graph and what is happening in the story. The ordered pair will still lie on the X and Y axis, but the names of the X and Y axis may change depending on what's happening in the story. Okay, and then of course, always label points first so you can visualize what's going on and how they are changing. Now, make sure if you have questions, write them down, okay? Now, the next piece, you guys are gonna get into practice problems and come back to check your work. 
do not do the exit ticket yet. Make sure you're doing all four pages of the practice problem and then coming back. All right, pause the video and get started. All right, welcome back from trying out the practice problems. Now let's go through the stuff together. Go them to go through them together. So number one, Coach Herrick graphs the relationship between the number of points and the number of saves her field hockey team has made at each game. So of course they're telling us to figure out the meaning of point A. I circled the answer B. Do you guys agree? Yes or no? No, you should not agree. Why Why shouldn't you agree with this answer? Because since I labeled my points first, right, we should know that she right now has made two goals and six saves. So that's why my x-axis represents the two. In my court in my coordinate um point, and then the six represents the number of saves. Now let's go and figure out which answer is should be circled for this correct one. A, the team made six goals and two saves in that game. C, the team made two goals and six games in that game. Or D, the team made six goals and six saves in that game. Which one can we cross out next? D. Correct, because right now we know that our point after we labeled it was two and six. So those are the only two numbers that we should be worried about. Pair it together. Okay, now let's go back up. So we have A, the team made six goals and two saves in that game. And we have C, the team made two goals and six saves in that game. Let's look at how we are labeling our coordinate planes. So our x-axis has number of goals and our y-axis axis has number of saves. Which one represents this point best? Correct. It's C as our answer. The reason why it's C, because the two is coming from our x-axis so from here and then go and then so if we were planning here that's the number of goals and the number of saves which leads up to 6 which is why this is 2 and 6 all right let's go to the next one i'm going to zoom in a little bit on this so you guys can see so coach kawa collected data on 5 of his baseball players the points show shoe size, and the number of runs scored this week by the five players. What am I missing before actually trying to get into this work? Right, we did not label our points. So if you still aren't labeling your points before trying to understand the information that is given to you, make sure you're going back and doing that, okay? And pause the video if you have not done it, and then do it and fill it out at this time. All right, so welcome back from labeling your points. Now let's get into the questions. So which player scored the most runs? All right, so we know that we have data collected on shoe size for our x-axis and then runs for our y-axis. So if we look through to figure out which player scored the most runs, we are looking at our numbers in which piece of our x-axis, the x or y? Correct, our, our Y. So we should be looking for the number that's highest within our labels to figure out who ran the most, who scored the most runs. So once we do that, that is leading us to figure out that Carmen has scored the most runs because in the Y axis, she has the number 11, which is the highest point on the graph. All right. Now, the question asks us if the x-axis was changed to be at bats, the y-axis represented strikeouts, which player would have stepped up to the plate most? So this is when you guys can basically take this graph and change 
anything that you have right here. All right? All right, so I'm taking that same exact coordinate plane, the same exact points, but I'm switching up my story right now for who is going to be at bat for my Y axis and then what my Y, I mean X axis and then what my Y axis represents, which is strikeouts. So which player would have stepped up to the plate most? So let's look to see who stepped up more. So who had a was changed to be at bats. So at bats means who who went up to the plate more and was able to swing. So I'm looking at my y axis. So we need to figure out who has the highest number in their I mean x axis. Who has their highest number in their x axis for at bats? Do you guys agree that it's Rebecca? Correct. It is Rebecca because she has the highest number for at bats, which is 11. Okay. Now let's go down to the next story. So again, this is where we are figuring out that we can still use the same plane, coordinate plane, the same points. But if the story changes, then of course the outcome of this, of who we are looking for changes as well. Okay. Let's scroll down to the next one. All right, so for this second story, you guys were trying to figure out if the x-axis was changed to the number of times a person practices and the y-axis represents the number of times they hit a home run, who would have practiced the least but still be successful? So realize we are looking at the number of times a person practices, so we need to look at the least but still be successful. So having a pair, a ordered pair of five fives doesn't show that much much success. Rebecca practiced a lot, but did not hit a lot of home runs. And then we have someone like Jason. Does it just, yes, sorry. Then we have someone like Jason who has practiced only four times, right? But then hit 10 home runs. So this represents right here who would have practiced the least, but still be successful. All right, let's move on. So Leroy is on a camping trip and he is recording information about the different birds he sees. Each ordered pair shows the number of birds he has seen and the time of day he spotted them. Okay, so right here, I made sure to label my pair ordered pairs first. So the time of day, we have 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and or 10 p.m. And then we have the number of birds. So at, like at this time of day, so at 1 p.m., he saw six birds. At 3 p.m., he saw eight birds. And at 10 p.m., he saw 10, 10 birds. Create your own story problem that uses the same points above with different labels for the Y and X and Y axis. What story did you guys come up with? Okay, so I created my own story, and I used uh, my x-axis amount of days I have seen and the amount of hours. So I'm going to go through this. Okay, my coordinate is 1, 6. I played one video game six times. I did it six times. My second order pair is 3 and 8. I played three video games in eight hours. And then lastly, I did play 10 video games in 10 hours. So I have the least video games for that amount of time and played that all the video games in the least amount of hours. All right. Make sure that you guys are looking at creating your own story that makes more sense. And of course, you can go to the next video to see how to come up with your own story. Your story is just about the things that make your story better. Okay, let's go down. So Dr. Leos has collected data about the ancient Egyptian. The points show the age and the number of people they have seen for the most sense each person practices. The labels are placed on the X and Y axis. How does these points explain what is happening in the story? Now, what did I forget to do with my coordinates? Exactly, I forgot to label. 
So first we need to label my points before I can even explain how these points can help what's happening in my story. So my first one is one for my x-axis and nine for my y. Because I know that if I subtract the x, I'm gonna count as a four. And then it's not still just nine for my y. My next one up here for Anna is going to be two for my x and five. Five for my y. Tina has four for my x and two for my y. Jacob has nine for my x and one for my y. And Ken has twelve for x and two for y. Now I'm able to share what's happening. Okay, so I know that in this, it is showing my A's for my X, my growth for my Y. So if I look at Jacob, I know that at age nine, he only grew one inch since his last birthday. If I look at Tina, I know that she started at age four and she grew three inches from her last Okay, so now let's get back to my question and answer that we're going to do first. Based on your labels, who has grown the most? Correct, Lucas. The reason being is because if you look at how much Lucas has grown, it's nine. It is not low like Jacob or like Ken, who grew nine inches since his last birthday and grew one inch in the ninth grade. Who has grown the Jacob has grown the least because it's already at age nine and he only grew one inch since his last birthday. All right. Oh, secret cold time. Your secret word for today is the word rainbow. Okay. Rainbow. All right. Now, let's get into this portion of the um, prep time. It says, a man wanted to make a map of nature and craft a vision. Okay, what would be the most helpful labels for plants and plants and why? So what do we think our labels should be? Right, so we are if we are looking at where you can travel in a graphic of locations, um several locate graph the locations of places like the Great Lakes National Park, for example, him label his number of blocks that he is walking. So Think of it as my first place is going to be starting at Aurora. He went to the school, so this could be he walked four blocks in two minutes. Okay? Just think of it as time, hours, and things like that. Right? Next, we would think about what people we use. We can use miles, we can use feet, we can use anything if you're talking about how when we are thinking of how to plant things in your garden. All right. Okay. Let's get into Paloma. So Paloma is starting a dog walking business. So she has to keep track of all the dogs she walks with. Points show how many miles each dog walks and how many treats they get on their walk. So I've of course started off with labeling who uh labeling all my ordered pairs. So now it's time Because the first we can think of, so we don't have those labels on here yet. It's not really telling us who did what in the demographic in terms of miles they ran. Now we need to look at the structure that is going to be used. So first one, how would you label the elephant or the elephant? Lumpy has to be the most common pair. So let's find Lumpy. Okay, so we are realizing right now Lumpy is if we think of him as eating the most treats, Y would represent treats, and X would represent miles. Why? 
why would y represent this? Correct. Because y is the highest highest number we have. So we need x and y to be the highest. And we would know that this is representing the test e in the most treats, and y should represent the test e in the treats. So we need x to represent y. Now, let's think about it in two different ways. How would you label the So again, we need to look at the square pair here. Realize that tangent is going to be the same as the x-axis. So if we were looking at it this way, we would know that the x-axis should be labeled as treats, and the y-axis must be labeled as miles. Okay, so make sure that at the end of the day, we are taking information, the same information, and changing using the same coordinate planes, the same points, we can play around and it's going to bring you a different result. Okay, next slide. So. Now, it is time for your exercise. So, make sure you are going through this professionally. If you have a problem out in your breath time, I would suggest you do that. I would suggest trying this graph out on a piece of paper, labeling all of the points, and then thinking of how you're going to all right. Happy Friday. Hope you guys stay safe and be in the situation. So any further breaks, any time to you know hang out with your family, and we'll see you guys on the Monday after. Bye.